And why why do all ARPGs kind of look like pretty similar? I mean, I guess I could say the same thing about MMOs and that, you know, after a while, like all MMOs after a while all have skill bars and everything, but like it's always the squares and this item takes up this many squares and you have this inventory thing and you open it up and your guy's standing there looking at the camera and you have the little, the blocks, you put the things in. Yeah, the, Diablo set the standard. Yeah, I need, to, I need to play Diablo 1 then. You know, as much as Blizzard gets, they sure did start a lot of genres, didn't they? I mean, World of Warcraft basically spawned a million MMOs that were ripping them off, let's be honest. And Diablo 1 looks like it kind of did the same thing. Yeah, I know that was Blizzard North. I know that's OG Blizzard and that it's not even the same people anymore. I get it. I understand that. I'm talking about, I'm obviously talking about the Blizzard that made the games. To be honest, Blizzard was behind on MMOs. I don't know how you can have, look, maybe nowadays, yes. But World of Warcraft being behind for an MMO is probably the worst take I've ever seen. I'm going to be honest. Like, World of Warcraft was insane. Like, at the time, WoW was literally insane. I understand they're not the first person to do an MMO. I played the MMOs before World of Warcraft, okay? I did. There was great ones, all right? However, WoW was crazy good. You could try to take away from as much as you want, but, like, WoW set the standard for MMOs going forward. There was a million games that ripped off WoW afterwards. Yeah, I see a lot of people mentioning EverQuest. Sure. To be fair, EverQuest was one I did not play out of the list. So I don't have personal experience with EverQuest. I understand people like that one a lot, okay? But I'm assuming that World of Warcraft was much more user-friendly or else more people would have played EverQuest. You know what I mean? EverQuest was much larger than WoW. Was EverQuest a... I don't think EverQuest had more players. Maybe if you mean larger in like a geographic sense inside the game. But did EverQuest actually have more players than world of warcraft it kind of sounds like there's some everquest andes in the chat is what i'm hearing i don't know i think trying to to argue the way out of world of warcraft like setting the industry standard for mmos is like a crazy like it's just you hate blizzard is what that is wow is still to this day one of the most played games and back then it was i remember when i was younger and wow came out like i would see wow and was like holy shit, what is that like a you know yeah wow brought mmos in the mainstream yeah because I remember even in WoW, like, people were talking about, like, EverQuest. Like, it was it was kind of like Path of Exile to D4, if D4 was actually good, you know what I mean? They'd be like, well, Path of Exile did it better, which, you know, maybe they did. But World of Warcraft was like, WoW was peak Blizzard, in my opinion. I mean, people would probably say D2, but, like, WoW for me was peak Blizzard. <laughs> like, The Burning Crusade and Lich King are some of the best gaming of all time. Burning Crusade, like, Outlands PvP was very good. Watching the Fell Reaver walk around for the first time was, like, banging. The quests were good. The cinematics, dude, the cinematics. Like, you cannot top the WoW cinematics. Like, I, I started a, a WoW Classic hardcore character, and watching the cinematics for the first time and hearing the, the da 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 was crazy good. Watching the Lich King animation, man... Like, you tell me, you you listen to this music and don't tell me this doesn't bring back memories. Listen to this right now here. I mean, come on. That brings you to a good place. That shit brings you to a good place 100,000 million percent. Makes you want to play classic again. You can hear this music from at any time and immediately want to play the game. I'm listening to it and it's making me want to play WoW. You're making me want to resub the WoW, stop it. That's what I'm saying though. Like it, the, the music is so iconic that it puts you, it puts you right in there. So I played through, through Lich King and then when Cataclysm showed up, I kind of like, eh, I started chilling a little bit. You know what I mean? When it, so let me, I'm, I'm curious about something. I think it's all the same time. But what expansion did you stop playing WoW? At what point did WoW, for you, you started to like, well, you know, I'm going to try something else, and then you just like eventually unsubbed. I fucking, I fucking knew it was going to be Cataclysm. The people who say Wrath, we need to ban all of them. If it wasn't going to be Cataclysm, it'd be Mr. Pandoria. Like, I, okay, here's the thing with Cata. I, I, I have a, maybe I have a bad take, but this is something that I think, which is that, when they literally destroyed and like uprooted the original world 
and I could fly around the original world, world and see the world from a different perspective, it made me not care about the world as much. Like for me, the OG area, like walking through Westfall and all these places, like when you go to places and it's just torn up because of, you know, uh, the fuck was his name? What, what the, what the, f holy sh why can't I remember his name? Deathwing, not Deathclaw, Deathwing. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I knew it was Death something. I couldn't get the, he literally has these giant wings and I can't get the word wing to go into my head. Uh, so when Deathwing goes and like destroys the planet, basically like fucks up Azeroth, it kind of made me like care less about the area, to be honest. Like Lich King was peak wow. I, I, my unbiased, no copium, factually, objectively correct, burn, in the Burning Crusade, going into Lich King, peak wow. Best cinematics, some of the best rating. The PvP was good. In my opinion, the PvP was good then. I actually quite liked it. Like, I thought Burning Crusade, Lich King, that's, that was it. The Burning Crusade arguably could have been the only one that was better. It's just because one of the best in-game contents. Yeah, but also thematically. I mean, yes, I agree. I think there's a good point in chat about being narratively one of the best. I think narratively it was one of the best. I think uh, artistically it was one of the best looking. I also think that the bosses were some of like... It was like Thanos, you know what I mean? It was like a Thanos level villain. Like, you know, the Ill Illidan is cool and all, but he didn't feel like Arthas, the f***ing Lich King. You know, like as an enemy, like, oh yeah, f*** Illidan, but you know, you're more like, ah, oh, the Outlands and the Fell Reaver and stuff. But Lich King was like Arthas' is big bad, you know what I mean? You had, you had a direction in which this big bad guy is a huge problem. Arthas did nothing wrong. Yeah, there's, you go, there's another Thanos thing. You're not prepared was iconic. I agree he had a better catchphrase. I'll get I'll give you that he had a better catchphrase. My biggest regret was not doing enough raiding. I did too much PvP and not enough raiding. I didn't experience the stuff when it was difficult. I experienced it later when most people had solved it. Have you heard about the guy that ruined hardcore WoW? Well? Yeah, the guy that was like post schizo decided to wipe his whole guild. He he's the hero that we didn't deserve, he's the one we needed, you know what I mean? Like, didn't he literally tell some people, like, don't come to school tomorrow? I watched that video. Uh, I think it was Asma did an interview with him or something. I, I watched a video of Asma's talking about it. Wow, bad. Never played it. It came out as a monthly fee. Now look at everything. Boo. Bro, like, here... You know what? I'm gonna give you my take. I'm gonna give you my gaming take, okay? Which is that... I, I don't care if I have to pay a full retail box price, DLC, day one patches and monthly fees i don't give a f you know what i want a game that's worth it like i will pay it if you can just make a good game like wow i was okay with playing the monthly fees during bringing crusade and lich king because it was a fucking good game and i'll buy their dlc's because i loved it and it was a good game you actually offer me a good game i will pay the price no problem the problem is they're giving us not good games and then charging them like they are good games then they give us a dog game and then you have a game with DOC, day one purchases, pre-orders, more monetization, cosmetics for sale, battle passes, and pay to win. You get that in like 90% of the games. And so, of course, everyone's mad. But you give me a good f***ing game, you can take my money. You can take my money. Just give me a game that I want to log into. You know what I mean? Like, I am, I am waiting for a game that I can hand my money. I just, there's no games out there that I want to do that. They spend so long thinking about monetization, they forget about the game. But the problem is they backwards engineer. So they think, what games are making the most money? Oh, they're games with battle passes, with microtransactions, with pay to win, with pre-order, three day early access, and with day one DOC, all this stuff. So then they're like, okay, so how do we make a game that has all of those things? And then they build backwards. It's you know, it's like, it's like my easy, uh, my issue right now with Star Wars, which it, it, my issue with Star Wars is not that I don't like the content. I actually think Andor was as good as Empire Strikes Back. One of the only times I've ever thought the, the Star Wars was pretty fire. I actually quite like Ahsoka. I know it's mid, people are saying it's mid. I actually kind of like it. My issue is not the content that's coming out. My issue is that they are backwards engineering to always have one show a week so that way you're on their stupid Disney Plus for three and a half years because they're just going to give you one episode of one show once a week just to keep you up. Because they're reverse engineering what they want, which is how long do we keep people on the platform? 
And so how do we do that? We buy the biggest IP and then we bleed it out over time. But like, I just buy the, sell me the product. You'll get thousands of my dollars if I could pay for every episode. Just give me a, give me any Star Wars content. I'll buy it every time. I'll buy the boxes like it was a DVD. I just want the content, but it's not there. Do I ever miss the Jedi Knight game series? Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so Jedi, I want to say Night 2, was it Academy? There was a PvP, like, online game mode in which people hung out like it was just a lobby and you would just, you would, like, one-on-one -on -one lightsaber people. People would go to the middle of the map and they would sit there and they would, like, people would, like, challenge each other. And then they would try to fight and it had, like, the blue, uh, the yellow, and the red stance. But the red stance was the one that, like, most people used. And so what we would do is you all sit around, you find a guy you want to fight, you would, like, crouch, like, ha-ha, uh -huh, let's fight or whatever. You start it. And then it was the lightsabers actually fought and like bounced off each other and shit. So it, and you could delay your attacks. You could start the swing and then once right about here, you could do like a backflip, which would like lock in your swing until you landed the backflip. So you could like juke and then ah oh, flip lock it and then try to hit him and all that. Or there was movement you could do to try to min max how your lightsaber hits. Sort of like the games like uh, For Honor and Chivalry 2 and stuff like that. And so if you were good at it. You could really crush some kids in that Jedi game. And there was a uh, there was game modes which is like one on one, and people would have to sit sit, and the person who won would stay. So you would have to beat the guy, and you would have like one guy who was like a giant Jedi master just shitting on everybody. So they would log into the lobby, people would go in, get dumpstered by the guy, then the next guy would go get dumpstered by the net. Like people would just watch this guy, and everyone's like, "It's my turn. Let me see if I can beat this guy." He was basically the equivalent of the Jedi Master, like, dunking on all these Jedi Padawans who are desperately trying to be them. Man, do I miss the Jedi games. I don't know why we don't have, like, a Chivalry 2, For Honor, Mordhau type of game, but for lightsabers. Like, Star Wars has got to be one of the IPs that has dropped the bag the hardest in games. Like, we had Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Galaxies, and then it just went... <laughs> and yes, we got Battlefront, admittedly. But after those games, it just... Like, the best IP was some of the worst games. Yeah, OG Star Wars Galaxies was so good. OG Star Wars Galaxies was... There's... there's The trifecta for me is RuneScape, back in actual 2007. World of Warcraft, Star Wars Galaxies. Three best MMOs of all time. There's a few other good ones. Star Wars Galaxies suck. Too much nostalgia looking back on that. Nah, bro. You probably played after the new game expansion. Star Wars Galaxies sucked after they decided to clone what every other MMO was doing. When Star Wars Galaxies was doing the thing that they were developing, it was way better. When you actually had 64 different classes and you could be a doctor and entertainer, all of the cities were basically player built. You could go into a cantina and there was people there literally just like uh, getting experience dancing. There's people getting experience playing the music. There was doctors like buffing you. There was creature handlers that had rancors. Jedi was actually hard to get and you barely ever saw them. You could be a stormtrooper or a rebel. There was actual like raids on stormtrooper bases and shit. Back before they ruined the game? No, Star Wars Galaxies was innovative. I would argue it's still innovative even for today. It had probably more content than most MMOs have even nowadays. And the player-owned housing was the best player-owned housing I've ever seen. Like you actually could... Oh, you could take a house and set it up on fucking Tatooine, not in an instance. And anyone could show up to, to your actual house and you knock on the door and you can let them in. And they can go in and guess what? You can have robots that you can set up that sell your stuff. So you could actually have like a vendor if you wanted to sell your shit there. Like the housing in Star Wars Galaxies was disgusting. You could go kill stuff, get like Rancor heads and put it on your wall you could do anything you wanted in star wars galaxies it was an amazing game it was a role player's paradise but more so it was a star wars fan paradise because you actually got to live in the star wars universe instead of being in a star wars universe and killing fifty thousand of the same monster because it's an mmo you actually got to live in a world star wars galaxies was way ahead of its time and then i don't know why they decided to ruin it it very quickly died right after they ruined it First character was role playing as a stripper. I made so much money as a dancer in Star Wars Galaxies. A lot of people did. Like Star Wars Galaxies Cantina was essentially the Goldshire uh, farm uh, of back then. Is there anything like Star Wars Galaxies now? Yeah, there's a lot of like uh, non-combat type of games with player owned housing, etc. They just don't capture the same thing that Star Wars did. Because the reason those games are good, like the role playing 
heavy, uh, like player owned housing, interactive type, like sandbox types of games. The reason those are good is because of the community. And in order for the community to be good, they have to be passionate about whatever the topic is. So Star Wars is one of the most passionate communities about a topic ever. So if you make a sandbox style game that everyone has to make their own content, but then you do it on an IP that everyone fucking is fanatic about, then you have a really good sandbox because that brings in the people that are innately good at making sandbox games enjoyable because the community is fire. But if you make some random game, which is like Weeb of Fortune 69, and then you make a sandbox game, which is even better than Star Wars Galaxies, the IP blows, so the community is going to suck because people are going to come in and just make some random bullshit. Like, it, it has to be built around something that people have a mutual love for. It can't be a new, fresh IP that just is some cool art. Like it has to actually have an IP that brings people into the sandbox innately because they have to want to live in that world.